ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into today's episode of the Morgan Man Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Cole Morgan. Here on today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the Atlanta Falcons versus Detroit Lions preseason week one game recap. And also, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the Call of Duty League 2023 season with the structure rules and my three improvements that needs to happen for the 23 season to be a banger. So then any further delay, let's go to get straight into today's action. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about the Atlanta Falcons versus the Detroit Lions preseason week one action. I'm going to keep this very short, sweet, and simple. The Falcons did defeat the Detroit Lions 27-23 on Friday, August 12th in Detroit and guys let me tell you the Falcons were not favored against the Lions the Lions were actually favored at a minus two and a half and the Falcons out out did the the betters the Vegas odds and I was like okay this is really good you know the Falcons are getting a rare preseason win because the Falcons are not a preseason team and for us to get a win like that that is that is very promising without getting like too overly hyped and saying, oh my God, Super Bowl, here we come. No, no, just just stop that, okay? Just stop that. Because, again, it's preseason. Nothing's mattering right now. It's just player development. Who's going to be cut? Who's going to be added each and every single week? But still, this is a good sign, though, because the offense showed a lot of life. Uh, Marcus Mariota definitely looked very comfortable out there on the field you know, dropping the ball right in the chest of his receivers, scrambling for that first touchdown on the first possession for the Atlanta Falcons. And it just made things a lot easier for the Atlanta Falcons offense to start scoring and not relying on young way Koo pretty much. I mean, we had to rely on them like two or three times, but other than that, guys, we scored touchdowns. That's what you like seeing. And if we could do that week one against the saints, all the way through week 18, you know, we, we have a good shot. Defense, however, not so much. You know, defense has still got to be really approved upon. Now, Dean Pease, now he could be just doing this on purpose. But with it just being kind of just near about generic plays on the defense, you're not really recording sacks or interceptions on the quarterback. That's a little concerning. Now, the only bright spot with our defense was the blitz play in the run the defensive line against the opposing run game the blitz plays definitely worked out for the falcons going up against the detroit lions offensive line because the lions offensive line you know was struggling the the pocket was collapsing and it made the quarterback you know throw the ball out or to a wrong receiver that didn't catch definitely love that and then that defensive line against the Lions run game, you're not getting past that wall. I am sorry, but that wall is just atrocious. Like, I think the Falcons, even last season, with it being just a terrible defense, was still, like, top 15. And it's just like, okay, like, wow. Like, we're good against the run game, but not nothing else. So, uh, but other than that, the Falcons did amazing. I give them a B plus because of the Marcus Mariota and offensive entire scheme pretty much did their job. The defense was there. They were active, but just not getting that pressure on the quarterback. Like a lot of people thought Dean Pease was going to say and say what we're a top 10 defense like the New England Patriots. <laughs> but however, we're moving on to the Call of Duty League 2023 season. I will not read over every bit of this right here, but you can check out the Call of Duty League website. The article will be linked down below on the show notes for you guys to check it out. But it's just saying that August 22nd will begin the new 2023 league year, and the August 21st will end the 2022 league year. Um, you know, exercising contracts, uh, contract negotiations will not be advised from the league office. It will just be between the org and the player itself. And that the maximum term contract is three seasons and the minimum is one season. And all players in the league will receive a minimum annualized salary of $55,225 US dollars 
healthcare benefits and retirement benefits. So that is definitely good for the league to provide that to the players and teams are required to distribute at least 50% of their prize pool earnings to players directly. So that is again, you know, something that where the league is going to get their money back and the org is going to get their money. So everybody's going to get paid pretty much right there. But this, uh, this contract thing right here definitely is, it's something to read right here, but it's just going to be like it was each and every single season. Just, you know, hey, you, you can't, you know, talk to a certain player until this specific day. Just abiding by contract and rule regulations. So now moving on to the final subject of today's podcast, ladies and gentlemen, is the top three things the Call of Duty League need to do right now, this offseason, to ensure that the CDL 2023 season will be a banger. And now that, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number one is the expansion. Right now, we're currently sitting at 12 teams in the CDL, but we need 16 or more. 16 definitely sounds like a great number, especially with you going into now your fourth season of the Call of Duty League. You know, you've got Modern Warfare, Cold War, and Vanguard. Now you got MW2 2022. 23 however and that's four seasons and you're still stuck at 12 teams that needs to change this season so you need two north american and two european you're losing a european already because of the paris legion going to las vegas and they will be now known as the vegas legion so now you just really got the toronto ultra and the london royal raven so there goes You know, now like one of the three European teams to now North America. So me personally, I think you need to go to to North American and two European. So that way now it would be five European teams. So way you get a good balance of, you know, competition throughout each region. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, and I think a lot of everybody's going to agree with me on this. Everything land. You are a multi-million dollar company and you're still playing online. Why is that? COVID has, you know, I mean, it's it's still there. But if you regulate rules and restrictions on COVID-19, you can still have an event. You had these events for the Major Four Tournament in New York and everything like that. So if you could regulate And tell these people, hey, look, if you're sick, don't come in. Please don't. Okay? Or not even, please, just, you're not coming in if you're, if you got COVID. Like, just, just fucking leave. Okay? That, that's how you're going to do it. You've got to regulate rules and regulations when it comes to COVID-19 at these events. And for everything land, you know, if you're not wanting to travel across country, have it in a designated area. Like Canton, Ohio, or Las Vegas, something like that. You know, Los Angeles, whatever the case may be. Have it in a neutral location where teams are going to fly out there for like, like the CWL where there was pool play. And, you know, pool A, pool B, C, and D can compete each and every single week. And then you go into a home tournament like the Minnesota Rocker homestand, the Atlanta Phase homestand. Um, the London Royal Ravens home sand. Do your neutral location. All right, let's, we're just going to say Canton, Ohio, okay? You find a spot in Canton, Ohio. You play there for X amount of weeks for each pool. So like one week, pool A, second week, pool B, third, pool C, and then, you know, fourth week, and it'll be pool D. Once you get your pools in place, you know, you know who's going to be participating in what, then you go into that home stand based off those rankings. And then do those rankings and then have your tournament and then championship Sunday. Boom. You got a home stand winner. That's how you do land for a multi-million dollar company. That's how, that's how I would do it. Really. If I was running the, the 2023 season, I would go back to that kind of system. Neutral location, four weeks of qualifying, your fifth week, boom, you're in London 
fighting for the London Royal Ravens home series in that title. So number three, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the final one, and that's less GAs, more entertainment. So what I mean by less GAs, more entertainment is stop doing these gentlemen's agreements. Just have fun. Stop, you know, it is a major sport. It really is. But at the same time, you got to let the league office handle that. You, the player, needs to focus on the game plan ahead and how you're going to win each and every single weekend at your qualifiers and your homestand series. Let the league office worry about, you know, something that's majorly broken in the in the game and say, hey, look, that is overly a major disadvantage. We're going to eliminate that, and if you use it, you're going to be fine, you know, $20,000. But you as the players... Just don't sit there and bitch and argue about GAs. Just have fun, play the game, and let the league office worry about eliminating something that's going to be majorly at a disadvantage for certain teams or all the teams in general. And it's going to be more entertainment. So, like, for example, I believe it was the Cold War season, if I'm not mistaken. You know, snipers were GA'd. I'm like, why? You got Sam Octane, you got a, a simp who are gods at the sniper rifle, and you're GA in that. Why? That brings more entertainment, it brings more intensity to search and destroys. And you GA that. That that's not right. Let the league office make that decision, not the players. So guys, I sure hope you did enjoy. If you didn't, make sure to like button wherever you are listening from YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you are getting your podcast from. Make sure to go on my website on the podpage.com slash Morgan Sports. Subscribe on the newsletter to get my emails directly sent to your email account to check out each and every single Thursday. But until then, guys, I, Cole Morgan, will catch you all later.